Five years ago, I lost my best buddy, Odi. He was my traveling companion, my emotional support, and honestly, my shadow. I miss him a lot. After he passed, I could not bring myself to even think about getting another dog. How could I love another dog as much as him? So for a while, I took care of other people's dogs through house sitting and pet sitting. Then when I got my house in the mountains, I started fostering dogs looking for a home. There was Ugo, Willy, Svetlan, Bilbo, Zuka, Charlie, Argo and Noel. I'm so grateful for the time I got to spend with each one of those puppies and I have such fun memories of them. But last year I started feeling that maybe I could be ready to get my own dog. I was looking for an older, large sized dog. Those are one of the types of dogs that receive less requests and that end up dying in the streets or in the kennels. Let's face it, most people want puppies or small side dogs. But I have a weak spot for all these and I wanted to spoil rotten a dog for the time they had left on earth. Three times I inquired for a dog and three times it did not work for different reasons. Until I saw this boy. I don't know what it was, but I felt like he was the right one, so I reached out. I got in touch with Manuela, a very kind volunteer who explained to me that he had been rescued eight years ago from joining in an irrigation pond in the south of Italy. No one came to claim him and he spent those long eight years in the shelter. On paper, he's 13, but he could be a few years younger. She couldn't tell me much about his character since there are more than 300 dogs in this shelter so it's impossible to get to know them one by one. Here in Italy there are so many stray dogs, more than any shelter can accommodate. It is truly heartbreaking seeing in which conditions those dogs are found and the struggle the volunteers face to care for them. I couldn't go and just meet him because he was more than a, a thousand kilometers from me but I filled the papers anyway and waited anxiously to see if I would be approved. Luckily, they decided I was a fit, so I just had to wait for the last foster dog to find a home and then I would be ready to rehome him. After about two months since I first reached out, it was finally time to go and pick him up at his drop-off location. I got everything ready in the house and I hit the road. My lovely boyfriend offered to drive me down and by 4 o'clock at night the van arrived. I kid you not, as soon as I went to approach the van, I saw a huge shooting star crossing the sky. If this wasn't a sign from Modi, then I don't know what it was. As soon as I saw him, my heart melted. He looked so scared and tired, but so sweet. He was extremely overwhelmed, so we secured him in the car and drove back home, only stopping for a quick pee. It was so lovely seeing him sniffing around in his new home. He was very unsure about everything, but I could see him already relaxing a bit. He spent the first day on his new comfy bed. He did not want to go out at all. I think that's because he was used to staying in the kennel and the open space was just too scary for him. He did smell awful, but I did not want to stress him with a bath straight away. So instead I cleaned him as I could with some wipes and brushed his coat. By the second day, he already relaxed enough to chill in the garden with me and was already looking for human touch. By the third day, we could take short walks outside, although he initially hated the leash. When I 
felt he was comfortable enough with me, I was able to give him a long bath, maybe the first one in eight years. Finally, I put the old color that Odi used to wear and it fit him perfectly. He has been with me for a little bit less than a month now and it's been such a joy to get to know him. I didn't think it was possible to find a dog as balanced as Audi, but I have been proven wrong. <laughs> it's just amazing how fast he settled in considering how long he has spent in the shelter. Che bravo, dove è andato? I was able to take him to town, to coffee places and even to a pizzeria and he's just happy to be where he's taken. He really enjoys stealing water from glasses and loves the wood stove. He does not like candles and if he has the chance he will jump on top of the table so I have to be very careful not to leave any chairs available for him to climb on. I haven't told you his name yet, I'm gonna tell you in a minute, just bear with me, it's a really cute name. I just wanted to let you know that I set up a donation page for the charity that um, takes care of those dogs. Um, the description In the description bar you'll find the link, so if you're in a rush you, just, you can just go ahead and read about it over there, but otherwise I'll explain here how they operate. Um, so as you might already know, in the south of Italy there's a huge stray issue, there's just too many dogs, and he comes from a council shelter, so a, a shelter that's supposed to be subsidized by the government, uh, but because there's too many dogs, um, the shelter had 320 dogs, there's too many dogs, the shelters are overcrowded and there aren't enough funds. So what ends up happening is that they provide the basic of the care, so food and they clean the cages and they do, you know, sterilization, vaccinations and microchip when they first come in the shelter. But then that's it. They're just left on their own, basically. Um, if there is a dog that needs a medical assistance, they have a, an issue, something, you know, the council isn't really incentivized and in taking care of them because it's extra money that they probably don't have. So most of the time, they just the dogs are just left to their own devices in a lot of pain. Um, so what the charity does is that they go in and they check on the dogs, they provide um, medical care for them, they take them to the vet, they pay for the vet bills, they do the transport, all of that. Um, they also do, you know, just walk the dogs give them human touch, help with behavior issues. If there's a dog that is really scared of humans, then they're gonna try and get him around to humans. And they also do all, they take care of the adoption. So they take the pictures, they upload them, they publicize them, and they deal with the whole adoption process, which I assure you, it might not sound like a lot, but it's a lot of stress and emotional labor. I know we could have done it like for a very short period of time. We're very few dogs, so I don't know how those volunteers deal with it because honestly it can drive you insane um, not because of the dogs but because of the people trust me it's a registered charity and all the funds go to the dogs uh, as I said it's a volunteer run charity and right now what they need especially is flea and uh, tick treatments because in the south of Italy is a Mediterranean country and you've got leishmania, Ehrlichia and other pathogens that you can get from uh, ticks and uh, mosquitoes and those are awful because once you get it that's it it's a bit like Lyme disease for humans there isn't really a cure you can just uh, keep an eye on them and if left untreated this disease can lead to painful death um, so it's awful for the dogs and it's also 
really hard for a dog that has one of those diseases to get adopted because people will know that they will incur in extra vet costs during their lives so they're probably gonna be like nah not for me I want a healthy one what the shelter does is that they spray the anti-flea treatment uh, on top of the cages and so like it, it should land on the dogs but that's a very ineffective method of doing it because not all dogs are gonna be outside some dogs are gonna run away you're just not sure that they're gonna be in touch with the substance so it doesn't work in fact he got Ehrlichia um, and um, He's got a very low level of it, but still he had to do a long uh, treatment of uh, antibiotic and he will need his blood checked every 6 to 12 months, so not great. So what the charity needs right now is the treatment so that it can go inside the cages and treat each one of the dogs and make sure that each one of the dogs is protected. So the money is going to be used mainly for that and anything left is going to be used for medical bills to take care of the dogs and I will be um, you know showing proof of me sending the money both on the page on YouTube and they'll also be putting it on their Instagram account and also if you donate you gonna run the chance of winning this crochet toy which I've made uh, last week I don't know how well you can see it. it's a da dash hound crochet toy it's really cute I was really tempted of uh, keeping it and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna keep the page open for 30 days and then at the end of that period it doesn't matter how much you donate I'm gonna be selecting randomly a winner and I'm gonna be sending this to you so if you've got even just five euros something spared and please donate uh, they really need all the help like what those volunteers do I'm just such in awe of the strength and the will that they have to keep doing this job because as no it's just it's just a really tough job and um, so his name when he was in the shelter he was called Orso because all large sized dogs that get into the shelter were called Orso which means a bear and then the volunteers gave them the name Justin which I wasn't a big fan of so when he came here I thought of the name Nettle but then it didn't sound right when I was calling him like nettle, nettle, it just wasn't, I wasn't feeling it. Then I thought of meadow, which I like, but then one day I woke up, I looked at him and I was like, you're a vongola, you really are a vongola, which in Italian it means clam, um, because he's really sticky and I just thought it was a really cute name. And in Italian it's a female, it's a female word, so you would give it to a female dog, but I don't care, honestly. And also one of you on Patreon, because I shared that I had got him actually a month ago, on Patreon before and uh, one of you said that in English there's a saying that says happy as a clam so I thought that was cute as well so he's a clam he's my clam and I'm just so happy so grateful that he's here and I'm just happy that he's gonna have a few years of just freedom and quietness and relax and I just love him a lot like every day I tell me about 15 times I love him and uh, yeah we're just really happy <laughs> And with this, I hope you enjoyed the video and I shall see you very soon. Again, the link to the donation page is in the description box. Bye-bye.